Hi, I'm going to be talking to you today about the osteohistology of entilocapred horn cores. So entilocapred is the scientific name for what is commonly referred to as a pronghorn or American antelope, and they're found throughout the Western United States. What is particularly interesting about this group is that despite the uniqueness of their headgear and their commonality as a species, we really don't understand anything about what their headgear looks like in an osteohistological context, how it develops, or even its full function. The majority of information that we do currently have about entelocapred headgear is mostly confined to its basic composition of a permanent bony core overlaid by a deciduous or seasonal keratin sheath in both males and females. More simply, this means that they are going to grow and cast this keratin sheath on an annual basis. And this dearth in the literature is surprising if you compare it to other groups that possess headgear that, in addition to entelocaprids, make up a larger group known as pecora. These other groups include cervids, which are deer and have seasonal bony antlers, bovids, which include goats, sheep, cows, and antelope, and have permanent bony cores, as well as a permanent keratin sheath, and also giraffids, which are giraffes and okapis, and they possess a permanent bony core covered by integument. And there's quite a bit more literature on the development, composition, and function of headgear within these other members of Pecora that is lacking for entelocapridae. Because we lack this in information for entilocaprids, there has also been some historical phylogenetic dissonance, where entilocaprids have been given close relationships to various groups based on different factors. They've been linked to cervids because of the seasonal nature of both entilocaprid keratin sheaths and cervid antlers, as well as some postcranial characters, to bovids based on their overall composition of a permanent bony core overlaid by keratin, and to giraffids based on some genetic characters. Given all of this, this study aims to provide a foundational knowledge of entilocaprid headgear osteology in order to compel future studies that examine development and function of the headgear itself. So what we were able to do is utilize samples from a mature male and female entelocapra that were collected by the Wyoming Department of Natural Resources and were able that, and that were available here at OSUCHS as part of a previous study. And we were able to subject this headgear to standard osteohistological methods in which the headgear was removed by a, a bone saw, sectioned and prepared in ethanol and clearing solution before being set in resin. Sections were then polished for microscopy and scanned under full wave plank, wavelength, cross-polarized and circularly polarized light. This resulted in sections from both the base and the shaft of the horn core. And what we ended up seeing in these slides was really interesting. In the male, which is shown here on screen, the majority of the cortical area is composed of secondarily remodeled trabecular cortex. And deep to the periosteal surface, the thin outer cortex of the compact tissue is highly vascularized, primary fibrolumella bone. But what we also see is something a little surprising, especially in the anterior lateral aspect of the horn cord, and that is the presence of compact coarse cantilus bone. And the reason that this is so surprising is that typically this type of bone is found in long bones, such as arms and legs. And these bones utilize a different type of growth than what we see in something like facial bones. So to see the presence of this type of bone and what is essentially a projection of the frontal bones was really surprising. The female was quite similar to the male, although the overall cortical area was a bit more compact than the male. In the female, we were also able to maintain some of the epidermis to see some of the overlaying vasculature. And this is further visualized by these micro CT images of entelocapid skeleton vasculature. What we're able to see is that these are particularly well vascularized structures. So what we're able to say about these horn cores is that they undergo frequent remodeling as indicated by the high cortical area of secondarily remodeled trabecular cortex, although as I noted, this is present to a much lesser degree in the female. A probable hypothesis for this is differences in the females and that the females do not engage in the same interspecific combat behaviors that males do during the rut. We're also able to say that these horn cores are likely growing quickly by the presence of primary phylolamellar bone at the periosteal periosteal surface, and that there is likely some form of endochondral or modified endochondral growth, as opposed to wholly intramembranous growth taking place by the presence of compact coarse cantilus bone. The high degree of vascularization of the horn cores provides a potential source for nutrients needed for the annual growth of a keratin sheath, and also tells that, the, that these are costly structures to maintain. Overall, the purpose of this study was to create a foundational knowledge of entelocapric horn cores in an osteohistological context to help complete future studies that may examine aspects of headgear ontogeny and development, as well as function, especially in females, comparative studies with available osteohistological data of other pecorans, so that's our cervids, bovids, and giraffids, and then from a paleontological 
perspective, this data also helps with the diagnosis of fossil entelecaprids. Most fossil entelecaprids are diagnosed by their headgear, and so our lack of knowledge on modern horn cores is limiting our ability to better understand and identify this group in the fossil records. But hopefully the foundational knowledge will be a big first step in answering all these future questions. With that, I'd like to thank everyone that made this project possible with notable thanks to my co-authors, Drs. Haley O'Brien and Holly Woodward, and thank you so much for listening.